happiness is based on a promise God made to you that you believe. Now, if you don't believe it, it's not for you. I said many times, the gospel is to everybody, but it's not for everybody. Hallelujah. And power. What kind of power? There is no such thing as uh, white power, black power, brown power. Ain't no such thing as that. You ain't got but one power, and that's God's power. Chapter 1, uh, 13 and 1. Yeah, 13. Right quick. Let every soul be subject unto the yeah, every power. Every soul. Every soul. That means everybody. Amen. Everybody who, who, who breathes air. Be subject to what? Unto the higher power. Higher power. For there is no power but of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me read that again. There's no power. There is no power but of God. Y'all can take all that foolishness Amen. and take it right back to the 1960s or 50s where we come from. There's no power but of God. And if God made a healthy man and a healthy woman and you marry them and put them in bed, they're going to have a healthy little baby. Amen. Are the same. Amen. I don't care whether they're fat, skinny, tall, dark, black, whatever. <laughs> Genetically, they are programmed the same. That's why they can make babies. Yes. But if you take a horse and a cow, they can't make no babies because they're not genetically the same. Yes. You take a dog and a cat, they an animal, but they can't make no baby because they're not the same. We need to stop all this bullshit and stop looking at people from the outside and look at the content of their heart. Yes. <laughs> But you can't do this unless you come to the right place and be taught the right thing. Hallelujah. But first, before you can be taught, you got to have the Spirit of God within to accept spiritual things yeah. and spiritual guidance. Yeah. I said many times, Wall Street executives make, junior executives, make $15,000 a week. <laughs> but when I tried to have a rally last year in front of Walmart, to get the people $15 minimum wage an hour, nobody wanted to support me. So people are working right now for eight, nine, ten dollars an hour. While the people at the top are laughing at you. Amen. Work a year and they don't even want to pay you your unemployment. Like it's their money. We need to understand something. We need to come together and forget about petty differences. Come together and follow a true leader. And we can have more shallow homes, not only in Spartanburg, but in Greenville and Charlotte and wherever the Spirit leads. We ask the government for help. Turn this down. And I knew about them grants a long time ago. Y'all know about them grants they're supposed to be giving people. Them people who get them grants got a political connection. Amen. Trust me when I tell you. Amen. We fit all the criteria. Even had one of them citizens of congressmen come down. That's why I told you I don't vote. And all the secretary and took off pictures of what we are trying to do. Oh, you're doing the wonderful thing. We know you'll get that grant. Filled out six applications. You know how many grants we got? Zero minus. Amen. You know what God told me? Don't depend on the world. Depend on me. Amen. That's why we are able to do what we do because we got a handful. But the handful has come together in the unity of one spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. And when you got two or three gathered in the name of Jesus, we can say that y'all the mountain be not removed and it shall be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in order for us to accomplish anything, church, yes. we have to be spiritually connected. The blind man went looking for Jesus. Now Jesus wasn't looking for him. He's the one who needed help. Jesus did. Did y'all miss that? Y'all the one that need help, not Jesus. So in order for you to get help, you got to find where Jesus is. So therefore you got to be spiritually joined together and spiritually connected. And you cannot be spiritually connected if you don't know how. Don't you know, even with an electrician, they got to know how to make 
the connection. Amen. So you come to church and I rightly divide the word of God to you so that you can make a spiritual connection. And when you make that spiritual connection, whatever you pray and ask for, if it's in the perfect will of God, it shall be unto you. And we can be joyful and happy Amen. together until the trumpet sounds. And then we all go up to glory together. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Next week, we sent already uh, airline tickets for our church in the Philippines. Pastor and his family coming here to live. Yes. We didn't have enough money for the tickets. We went to somebody who was faithful and dedicated, and they stepped out on faith so that they can have their airline ticket. Come here. We don't have no doctors, no lawyers, no rich folk in true life. But we got people who believe in the promise of God. Malachi 316. They that fear the Lord. Spoke often whenever they came to church. Amen. One to another. And the Lord heard, hearkened, and heard it. Wait, and wait. When they came together collectively to worship God, the Bible said Amen. God heard Amen. their plea. Anytime we come together and I want a court, God hears us. Whether we are two or two thousand, or we ain't gonna have no two thousand. Straight the gate and narrow the way to leave the light and few that be that can find it. And this dispensation of time, only a few won't make it in the glory because only a few are going to follow the discipline code God has in the book. Now I want to say something about the discipline code. Some of you may not understand why we do this. You say that's not necessary. Any statute instruction that's found in this Bible and you disobey it, when you stand for the judgment throne of God, you ain't going nowhere with him. That's why statutes and ordinances are placed in the Bible for obedience. Yes. Obedience is what separates the wheat from the tail. Right. Yes. It separates the spiritual you. Are you saved or are you not saved? Yes. How can you tell? By the word. Right. By obedience to the word. Whenever we line up with the word, that proves who we are in Christ Jesus. And any time you hear these preachers saying, well, it don't take all that and it don't take all that, how do you know? Right. You didn't write this. This is God's word. If God said not will, he meant not will. If God said don't do this, you can't do that. If God said a sodomite, a feminine, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, that's what God said. How are you going to fight with the creator and you the creator? It don't take but a little sense. <laughs> Praise God. We have to understand, church, and I said this before. You can't fellowship with everybody who does not want to fellowship with the book. What did I say often? No matter how popular a rabbit wants to be, he can't prove his point at a hound dog's convention. There has to be a separation. And we are separate. We're not trying to be like them. We don't want to be like them. We want to be holy, sanctified, and set apart for the master's use. And the Bible says we are peculiar people. And uh, I believe the Bible says we are special. Did y'all go? I, I, I'm sitting down in about 30 seconds. Uh, uh, six chapter. Seven. Seven six. Amen. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen. He chose you. To be a special people unto Himself. Oh, wait a minute. Something else I want y'all to hear. A special people unto Himself above. Above all people that are on the face of the earth. God said you're special. Now what does special mean? Peter said over in, in his epistle, peculiar. What's the difference between special and peculiar? None. It simply means we are different. And we have been separated by the word. I thank God for the holiness.